the names of God. 8.15, we had to move it to 8.15 from 8.30 because we didn't have enough time. So 8.15 in Fellowship Hall, where uh, Chuck Pierce's school on the school of Issachar, it comes from the names of God, but don't let that fool you. Man, this is a tremendous study. And so it's every Sunday morning at 8.15, and you will enjoy it, and on top of that, you will receive a lot. You know, this church, people say, well, uh, we need teaching, we need this. We We have something nearly every day of the week, if you want to get in on it, as far as a Bible study, a a teaching, or a prayer, or whatever it is, if you want to get involved in it. And it's right on our, uh, we have a, a schedule, the calendar, and everything's listed there. So anyway, this Sunday, uh, 8.15, Fellowship Hall, the names of God, praise the Lord. Well, God's good. Hey, do you know the first signer, talking about declarations and prayers, I just had this in my Bible. The first signer of the Declaration of Independence was John Hancock. And this was a, a prayer or a statement that he made. And... Uh, he said, we think that it is incumbent upon the people to humble themselves before God on account of their sins. Now, now, think of where we're at today and where we started. John Hancock, first signer of the Declaration of Independence. We think it is incumbent upon the people to humble themselves before God on account of their sins and also to implore the divine blessings upon us all that by the assistance of his grace may we be enabled to reform whatever is amiss among us. Now listen to that. We've got a lot of miss among us. Uh, you might even say it's a mess, but it's a miss among us. That so God may be pleased to continue to us the blessings we enjoy. See, I believe the covenant is established. But we as men and women of God, if we refuse to walk in obedience to God through the scripture, we remove the protection of God with our own selves. And I want to encourage you tonight because the Holy Spirit is here. I was talking to Glenda Rambo, our friend in Florida this week, that come up the evangelist. All of you... Uh, Everybody give Glenda a little hoorah. And you can have the word all day long, which you need to have. But without an experience of the Holy Spirit, it will do nothing but come and be a, you will have mental assent to that. You might get pious and pumped up, but you won't be powerful in the things of God because the Holy Spirit has to come and empower that word inside of us to change us and make a difference and make our lives effective for we have been called to be effective in this earth to bring glory to God. So it takes both together. And let me tell you something tonight. You might have thought you'd just come because you hadn't been in a while, or you might just, I don't know why you came. Maybe you came tonight to have an encounter with God. Well, if you do, if, if you, if you, dude, if you did, you will not be disappointed. Because I believe tonight is a special night for us to have an encounter with the living God by His Spirit. I believe He's here tonight in your life to bring a demonstration deep within you that will affect not only your spirit but your mind to bring a demonstration that all the tactics, all the things that Satan has been trying to throw at you to destroy you, that your God and your spirit, the spirit of the living God, is going to bring a demonstration tonight to set you free. Do you believe that? I mean, it could be in many ways. I mean, it could just be in wrong thoughts. It could be in depression. It could be in 
I don't know what's going on in your life, but God does. And also, the word connected with the Spirit of the living God will set you free. He said, if you will know the Lord, if you'll know Jesus, and you'll continue to be his disciple, then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, I want to encourage you tonight to be open to what God's saying here because a demonstration is going to manifest in your life to show you that Satan is totally defeated in your life and Jesus has had victory and rules and reigns in your life. Do you hear that, Tori? Say amen. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. We're in training, darling. We're in training. Every time I have to... Come here, Tyler. Walk up. Get your, get your shoulders back. Turn around here. Of course, this is my grandson, Tyler. And uh, y'all give him a hand. He's been going through about the last five years a real rigid training program that his pawpaw has put on him. And every time I have to correct or discipline him, I said, now, son, remember, you're in training. And without the training, you will never develop into the man that God has called you and equipped you to be. You've got to be trained. And sometimes the training seems a little harsh, but it's not. It brings us to a place of understanding of how we are to conduct our lives in obedience to a God we cannot see. He can see us, Paul, Paul, but he can't see God. But when he sees me, there better be a reflection of God coming from me to him and not allowing him to step in areas where he doesn't need to be. Amen? I love you, son. Man, you look good like he's fixing to jump up on that surfboard, doesn't it? I guess he probably will whenever the, uh, oh, do it again. Hey, Amen. Yeah, I guess when, uh, what was that song, uh, buying beachfront property in Arizona? Uh, whenever that happens, honey, you'll just go right down the hill here and go skiing. I mean, go surfing, you see. Oh, Canada had a earthquake this week, didn't they? And, uh, you know, the earth is in, we read there out of Haggai, the second chapter, about how the earth is being shaken and how the earth is in upheaval. And it says it will happen before the return of the Lord. And, and so it doesn't hurt for you to feel a little shaken inside tonight because God's going to come in and fill up the voids in your life to bring you to a new place of understanding and confidence in Him like never before. Okay? Praise the Lord. So I want you to understand, do you realize, does everybody know Colossians is in the New Testament? And in 2, chapter 2, verse 13 through 15, it says, Satan has been defeated. Jesus stripped him of all authority. He made a show of him openly. He brought him to naught, which means zero. Stripped him of all power and authority over your life. So why give place to him? Amen? Say, I resist the devil. By the power of the word of God. He has no access to my life. I am protected by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. The blood of the Lamb has set me free. I choose to remain free. Praise the Lord. Well, Isaiah 61. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Everybody say it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You see. Because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel. Say, because... The Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel, the good tidings to the meek. I shall deliver a word 
in season, out of season, whoever hears it, their needs will be met because of the content of the Word of God flowing from my mouth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Everybody look to the neighbor and say, Neighbor, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. To preach the gospel, I speak over you the spirit of the 